Have you been told you have knee arthritis and do you get really stiff, painful knees when you've been sitting for a long time and you just feel like, oh gosh, you really don't wanna get up out of that chair? In this video, I'm going to explain some exercises you can do while you're sitting in a chair to make sure that you don't get quite so stiff in the knees. I'm gonna give you several exercises that'll build strength in the muscles that affect your knees, that affect your hips as well. And I'm gonna explain what you should do in the long run to make your knees feel better and to get rid of the stiffness in your knees, even if you've been told you have knee arthritis. I'm also gonna explain one big thing that you will hear very commonly that will not help you at all. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna explain how you can get a totally free follow along version of this video if you really, really want it. So stay tuned till the end. So if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and feel right. Let's jump right into the knee exercises. So you're sitting down in your chair right now and I'm gonna have you start to use the muscles that are on the top side of your knee. So I'm gonna have you just extend like this. You're straightening out the knee. You're using these muscles. You might want to support your leg like this to help you maintain your leg position. If you have thigh muscles that are strong enough, you can do it with no help. But a lot of you will probably have very weak thigh muscles here and you'll find that maintaining this position causes immediate cramping in your hip flexors. So you don't have to torture yourself. You can also lean back a little bit and just give yourself a little bit more of an angle here so that these muscles up top are not working so hard to keep you closed in like this. When you extend, the lever arm gets longer, your leg feels heavier, and these muscles will freak out. So if you open this angle up, then you can just do these knee extensions. Just go till you feel like you're a little bit tired. You can feel that those muscles have worked and then relax and switch sides. So you can also do this while you're just sitting. Say you're out at a coffee shop, you're hanging out with a friend. You can just do this, get some blood moving, get that whole area here with your knee muscles, get that area working so that blood's flowing and those muscles feel healthy. Because what happens is most of us don't have to use our thigh muscles very much in day-to-day -day life, so these muscles atrophy and atrophy aches. If you were to lie in bed all day long, guess what would happen? You'd start to feel really crummy because all your muscles would be wasting away. And that's what we really wanna think about when we're told we have arthritis. Okay, so next thing we wanna do is work on the hamstrings, wake them up a little bit. The easy way to do this when we're sitting down is to just dig your feet into the floor and then pull them back towards you. So you will feel like you're kind of pulling yourself forward a little bit. You'll feel your butt and your hamstrings contract as you're digging into the floor and pulling this way. Feel those muscles contract, hold that contraction for three to five seconds, and then go ahead and relax it. And then do it again. Just do this for like eight to 15, maybe 20 repetitions, whatever feels decent. It shouldn't feel like you're cramping anything. It shouldn't feel like you're pinching anything. Just get those muscles to wake up a little bit. Feel them with your hands that some blood is going through there. Feel like, ooh, yeah, okay, those muscles are actually waking up a little bit and then relax it. So you got one set of the extensions, one set of the hamstring pulls. Next exercise is to wake up your butt muscles a little bit more. So we're gonna be pushing down into the floor. And while you're doing this, I want you to lean forward a little bit, not by curling your spine like this, but by shifting your pelvis, rolling the pelvis forward and putting some weight down into your feet. Push down so you feel some muscles contract. It'll be your hamstrings, it'll be some glutes, it'll be a little bit of your thighs here as well. And just focus on feeling weight and pressure going down into your feet and you are actually actively thinking about driving your feet down into the floor. Then you can come back, relax a second, come back, go into it, pressing down, feeling those muscles all working a little bit, getting used to taking your weight. You're gonna do that for five to 20 repetitions. You be the judge of what you need. Get used to feeling those firing, okay? After that, we're gonna start working on your lower leg because the muscles of your lower leg, these guys here, and these guys here all affect how comfortable your knees feel. So the next exercise, you're gonna be leaning forward and you're gonna feel weight into your feet, similar to what we were just practicing. And then you're going to be pushing into the floor, bringing the heels off of the ground. So you're just pumping. You're like an oil derrick, pumping oil out of the ground. 
You're gonna do this for probably 10 to 20 repetitions, feeling the muscles in your calves working. They're just gonna be firing. Go slow and controlled if you want this to be harder. Go fast if you are a sloppy, disorganized person or you're just impatient. Either one is okay, I'm the same way, but it really pays to go slow and controlled and get used to managing each of those positions, every angle with your ankle muscles, okay? Then we're gonna work on the muscles of the front of your ankles. These are on your shins. You have anterior tibialis. Doesn't matter what it's called. You're just gonna be pulling the toes up, okay? So your heels stay on the ground this time and you're pulling your toes up towards the ceiling, up towards the ceiling. You're gonna hold it and then slowly back down. You're just getting used to firing these muscles, okay? These muscles here, you probably don't fire ever because, I don't know, you probably have never even heard of tibialis anterior, anterior tibialis, or whatever you wanna call it. You just are pulling the toes back and back down. Do this to fatigue. It's probably gonna be 10, 20 repetitions, and then you're going to relax it. At this point, you can take a little bit of a rest and you can do all of those exercises for another round. Feel those leg muscles having worked a little bit, those lower leg muscles having worked a bit, and then you're gonna start working on your sit to stand. So, hey, I wanna say a big thanks to Kathy for becoming a super supporter on Patreon and also to RJ for becoming a lover of the Upright Health YouTube channel. Thank you both so much for joining me on Patreon. If you wanna support me too, you can go to patreon.com slash uprighthealth or go to uprighthealth.com slash donate to find all the ways you can support this channel so I don't have to make stupid commercials about powders or pills or whatever random stuff. And by stuff, I mean garbage. And if you haven't already, get on my newsletter at uprighthealth.com slash newsletter just in case the algorithm or YouTube decide that they don't like me anymore. All right, that's it. Let's get back to it. This is going to combine a lot of things that we've just learned. So we're going to put our weight forward. We're going to have weight in our feet. We're pushing down. We're taking our body weight. And then we are working on standing up with control and sitting down with control. If you find this difficult, hold on to the armrests on your chair, hold on to a stick, hold on to the wall, hold on to something to give you a little extra support. Over time, you wanna be working on doing more of the exercise, more of the movement, with less support. You want your body to be building the strength to handle this basic movement without any assistance from your arms. You're gonna do this for five to 15, maybe 20 repetitions as you get stronger and stronger. And as you can do more repetitions, you wanna start taking away the help that you're using. So again, you're becoming more competent and independent without any of the help. If you've been told you have knee arthritis, the important thing to remember is that your muscles are the things that you actually have some control over and your muscles are the things that will improve both your ability to move and your overall comfort levels. Some large scale studies have shown that the level of arthritis in your knee or in your hip has absolutely no correlation to the amount of pain or immobility that you experience. In other words, if somebody takes an image of your knee and says, oh yeah, you've got grade four horrible bone on bone osteoarthritis, you might have no idea. You can still run, jog, walk, whatever without any pain because what's seen in the x doesn't correlate at all with symptoms. And since that's the case, I encourage you to ATM, always think muscles because the muscles are the organ of movement. If they atrophy, they ache. So if you're aching, start building up those muscles, start stretching them, start strengthening them and see what happens to your pain. Which is the perfect segue into the long-term strategy and the long-term vision. Instead of just using these beginner exercises that I've shown you for your knee pain, start thinking about ways to build beyond just these beginner level exercises. So maybe today you're doing this and it is a challenge. Maybe in a couple months or maybe in a couple weeks, you're using ankle weights to make this a little bit harder and building up more strength, more mass, in these knee muscles so that your knees feel more comfortable on a regular basis. So let me start telling you about some things you can start building towards first. And the most important in my opinion is being able to handle doing a full squat. So you are working on getting up out of the chair and doing what's basically a kind of shallow squat 
down into your chair. But over time, what you really want to be able to do is what your ancestors were able to do and what human beings up until about 200 years ago were able to do really, really easily without a second thought. That is a basic human primal squat. Because before the advent of the toilet that we use in the Western world and now increasingly all over the world, we had to all squat down to poo on a regular basis because pooing like this is super not easy and if you don't want to splatter your poop all over your heels, you want to get down into a full squat. Now I have videos that go in detail about how to get into this position safely without destroying your knees or your hips or your back. So be sure to check out the links in the description box so that you don't just jump into this like a crazy person and try to slam down to the bottom because you will hurt yourself. Remember that slow is safe and fast is foolish. Another great thing you can do to progress some of the work you're doing with your hamstrings is to get an ankle weight and start doing some hamstring curls like so. Now, of course, if you don't have the ankle weight, you can do this exercise and it will potentially cramp your weak hamstrings. But over time, you're gonna need to use resistance. You're gonna need to use weight to make your hamstrings stronger so you are more comfortable and more resilient in the long run. And I also have a video that already shows you how to strengthen your knee muscles and these hamstrings using an ankle weight that I'll link to in the description box and up above. Now, if you're hearing all this and you're thinking, man, this is too much work. My doctor said I should just rest and this will all go away. I want you to realize and remember Remember something, your muscles do not grow. They do not get stronger from resting. And if all you do is rest, you will gradually lose more and more function of whatever joint you are trying to rest. I personally have been told many times by many different physicians that the answer to my foot pain, my knee pain, my hip pain, my back pain, my shoulder pain, my wrist pain, even my headache pain was to rest more. And what I found after many years of trying to follow that advice was that rest only made things worse. That doesn't mean you should go balls to the walls 110% on every exercise and try to do it as hard as possible. Instead, you want to take it slow and gradually build your ability. Gradually build your strength so that you're gradually doing things that are a little bit harder so that these muscles have the time and the ability to rest, relax, recuperate, and then come back stronger. And I would be remiss if I didn't also mention that you should be working on stretching and general flexibility of these muscles. You don't want to strengthen muscles so that they're constantly and chronically short and you lose range of motion. You want to make sure they can be long and strong. You want strength at every length. So make sure that as you're strengthening your hamstrings, as you're strengthening your quads and your hip flexors, that you're doing some basic level stretching to keep things functional. Many people have completely ignored doing any stretching for decades and if you now have knee arthritis, then remember you probably need to do some stretching and some strengthening to make sure you maintain mobility, independence, and comfort and get rid of that dang knee pain. And I also have a totally free video with beginner level hip stretches that I will link to in the description box and up above. And yes, those hip stretches are going to help your knees. When you first start these exercises, I would suggest you go Monday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Saturday, or something like that, so you have some days of rest in between. That'll give you some time to observe how your body responds. If you do these exercises three times today, and then three times tomorrow, and then try to do it another three or four times the next day, then you probably are going to cripple yourself with soreness. I would suggest that if your knees are already in the state of weakness where just standing up from a chair is hard, then you need to take it slow. You got to warm them up get them used to these exercises. And maybe this week you're only doing this full round of exercises twice, but maybe next week you can do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Maybe it'll feel okay. And if it does, great. Maybe you can bump it up a little bit more, do it a little bit longer, do a few more repetitions, add some weight, whatever it is. But in the very first week or two, please do not try to do these super hard because there's a high probability the soreness is going to make you super duper unhappy. It's like when you finally get your lazy coworker to do his job after three years of just lollygagging around. You're not gonna be able to get a full 100% effort out of him. You need to gradually trick him and coax him into doing a little bit more at a time until he's getting to normal production. Sorry, I kind of threw you under the bus there.
Whatever. If you'd like a totally free follow along version of the exercises that I went over in this video, then drop me a comment down below and let me know. If I see 200 comments that want a follow along version of this video, I will make it and post it to YouTube for free. So if you do wanna see a follow along version, make sure you comment and make sure you share this video with somebody else and tell them to comment too. If you'd like to support the channel, go to uprighthealth.com slash donate for all the easy options like PayPal or Patreon. And if you want a program to help you rebuild your body at home, go to uprighthealth.com slash DIY to find a program that'll work for you. For more free videos to help you with your stiff knees, check these out here. Like, share, and subscribe with the bell notification on. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't. Mm -hmm.